Somewhere in the depths of the solar system is an unfathomable secret. The mysterious moon Triton, orbiting Neptune, is shrouded in shadow, concealing characteristics that defy understanding. Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to the wonders of the universe. Today we embark on an extraordinary journey as we unveil a groundbreaking discovery, the first real images taken from the surface of Triton. But before we dive into the details, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest space discoveries and updates. All right, let's get started. Triton, unlike every other satellite, defies cosmic norms by orbiting Neptune backwards. The cryolava flashes that appear on its remarkably young icy surface reveal a dynamism that seems to come from another universe. But hidden beneath the ice, perhaps spanning an endless ocean, is a place where extraterrestrial life is kept hidden from prying eyes. Join us on this incredible odyssey to the solar system's outskirts, where you'll experience the chill and thrill of venturing into the unknown. One of the furthest planets in our solar system is Neptune, a blue icy behemoth pockmarked with interminable acoustic winds. Its faint light prevents us from seeing it with a naked eye beside only Pluto. The icy giant has 14 satellites in orbit, including Triton. Instead of relying on direct observation, British astronomer William Lassell used mathematics to make the initial discovery of the odd icy satellite in 1846. Even though telescopes couldn't see faraway objects very well at the time, scientists took notice to Triton because of how different it was from other satellites. All of them are much smaller, and save for few outer satellites travel in their orbit in the direction of the planet's rotation, while Triton rotates in the opposite direction, or retrograde. Scientists have found that the satellite has some striking similarities to Pluto, the well-known dwarf planet. There is a lot of similarity between them, including in terms of mass, diameter, and even the surface materials. But the significance of this for Triton will be discussed in a little. Its diameter is 1680 miles, making it nearly seven times bigger than Proteus's second largest satellite. Size permits it to sustain a thin atmosphere, which is mostly made of nitrogen and methane. The upper atmosphere of the satellite also has an ionosphere, an area where atoms and molecules are ionized at higher concentrations than on Earth. These elements are significant for establishing that Triton like Pluto may possibly be an icy dwarf planet. The satellite also has a rock to ice ratio of somewhere between 70 and 30. This provides more proof of Triton's planetary status and suggests in particular that it originated differently from any other known satellite. Therefore, it is assumed that Triton like Earth consists of a solid outer layer, a liquid mantle, and a rocky core. Triton is one of the solar system's furthest satellites at 2.79 million miles from the Sun, has an exceptionally low average surface temperature. The average annual temperature drops below 400 degrees Fahrenheit. An icy mantle lies beneath the surface of the satellite, which is covered in a layer of solid nitrogen. Together these factors give the surface a frosty sheen that reflects roughly 70% of the sunlight that strikes it over time. In instance Triton's surface may be very youthful, which suggests that the planet is not a lifeless rock, but rather a geologically active one. The changing face of Triton's surface has a fascinating history. Many shallow impact craters litter this outer layer, despite their proper size and depth being much greater. This points to the possibility that the satellite is making a comeback. The surface of Triton has huge ridges and valleys arranged in intricate patterns, much like the skin of a melon. However, if space debris was the primary source of the smooth black stripes in certain areas, then Triton would be covered in enormous impact basins. So scientists offer one plausible explanation for this distinctive landscape. A massive ocean could be concealed under the ice. The water and nitrogen that rains down on Triton's surface keeps it fresh and young. So how does it seem like water on the surface? Only powerful meteorite strikes or volcanic plumes in the satellite's outer crust can release enough water to flood the satellite's surface. This is also hinted to by Triton's spectacular nitrogen polar caps. Their creation depends on cryovolcanism. However, on such a frigid moon, how can water possibly erupt? Triton is heated by tidal heating due to the deformation of its core caused by Neptune's gravitational pull. In instance, solar heating can also be the source of cryolav eruptions. The nitrogen below the ice melts as it is heated by the sun's rays, and eventually breaks through the surface. 
Triton's water eruptions can endure for over a year ejecting enough material to cover several hundred square kilometers and revitalize large swaths of the surface. Senior researcher at NASA's Institute for Space Sciences Heidi Hamill theorizes that large geyser outbursts necessitate both a significant heat source and an ocean. However, the ocean's very existence has not been proven. Several theories attempt to explain the characteristics of a surface that is so young. For instance, nitrogen ice pockets may be melted by internal satellite heat and erupt into the atmosphere. Cryovolcanoes, an example, might not get their water supply from the ocean deep below but rather from isolated pockets of liquid rock. There are many mysteries surrounding Triton's makeup, and only missions to the heliopars will reveal whether or not the planet lives up to its billing. In 1989, Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to take high-resolution pictures of Triton. Voyager's path was redirected by Neptune's gravity when it flew over the planet's North Pole, allowing it to approach Triton from a distance of 25,000 miles, or nearly as high as geostationary satellites. After taking the initial pictures of Triton's surface, the telescope disappeared into the void of space. These pictures are what have allowed us to learn so much about the enigmatic spacecraft. Mass, atmosphere, and chemical makeup were all revealed by the Voyager mission's in-depth analysis of the satellite. The mission to Triton, for instance, demonstrated that molecular nitrogen predominates in the atmosphere with a tiny quantity of methane. This finding suggested that the satellite might be geologically active, leading to research into the characteristics of eruptions. In instance, Voyager 2 demonstrated to the world that Triton's surface features do not include oceans of liquid nitrogen. Triton's constant orientation with one side toward Neptune meant that the expedition only got to see 40% of the satellite in the southern hemisphere. Space telescope James Webb captured a new similarly spectacular shot of Neptune and Triton, but from a considerably greater distance. Over 33 years after the original image of Triton was captured. For a long time, Webb has captured images of Neptune's seven moons and its barely visible rings, but all the emphasis has been focused on Neptune's largest moon, Triton. The photograph shows a very brilliant star-like object to the left of Neptune. This is actually Triton. An eruption like this is further evidence that the moon's surface is covered in a layer of condensed nitrogen that reflects nearly all of the sunlight that reaches it. Even while we've learned a lot about Triton in the past 30 years, thanks to images, we still don't have enough data to create a full map of the satellite and find answers to the most intriguing topics. Therefore, additional missions to Triton are required to confirm the accuracy of the current estimates. The peculiar orbit of Triton appears worthy of special study. As we've already established, Triton is one of the few satellites that goes against the direction of Neptune's rotation. Retrograde motion, or counterclockwise motion of cosmic bodies, is rare. There are very few satellites in the solar system with retrograde orbits, and they all orbit giant planets like Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune. Triton's path of rotation is 23 degrees skewed with respect to Neptune's flat path. Typically, a contact with another body causes this inclination and reversal of motion. Therefore, some other object could have crashed with Triton in the past the same way and created the retrograde motion. The scientific community, however, does not currently favor this interpretation. The size and likeness of Triton to dwarf planets in particular cannot be explained by this scenario. What then? is the primary cause of the satellite's otherworldliness. Neptune's orbit intersects with the Kuiper Belt, the outermost portion of the solar system's debris disk. The dwarf planet Pluto can be found there. There's a second theory as to why an object in space would get stuck in a backwards orbit. A body having a stronger gravitational attraction can pull in a free-moving object that is traveling at a specific speed and heading. Triton was likely trapped by Neptune's gravity into its orbit. As scientists have found it challenging to predict the conditions under which Triton might have developed organically around Neptune, think about the possibility that the satellite may have been a separate object from Neptune in the past. It may have been a part of a double planet system like the one with Pluto and Saturn. When compared to the attraction between two small things, Neptune's gravity is enormous. Thus Triton's orbital velocity change may have contributed to its separation from another celestial body. If Triton's companion planet hadn't been evicted from the solar system, it might have pulled Triton into Neptune's orbit and prevented a collision with the icy giant. But this lost planet was not the only casualty of Neptune's gravitational pull. There are a total of 13 satellites in Neptune's orbit, split evenly between internal and exterior bodies. Every single one of them is incredibly light. 
For instance, Triton accounts for 99.5% of the mass of everything in the icy giant's neighborhood. As a result, Triton's migration may have obliterated the other moons of Neptune, leaving behind just shards. However, this is more relevant to the inner circle. It is possible that Neptune may have caught the other satellites, besides Triton. A trace of the cold moon can be found here too. Nereid, the third biggest moon, orbits with a very significant eccentricity. The distance from the Sun to Earth is approximately 858,400 miles at perihelion and 5,981,600 miles at aphelion. Likely, a moving Triton knocked it out of its orbit, injuring other satellites in the process that it survived. Triton is slowly drawn to the planet because its retrograde orbit causes it to move more slowly than the planet's rotation speed. Therefore, the frozen moon will most certainly be split apart by Neptune's gravitational forces in a few million years, giving rise to a new ring. While this dystopian future may be far off, Triton does have another feature that's worth investigating right now. Triton is encased in an icy covering of condensed nitrogen, yet beyond this shell there may be a warm ocean that may support life. The presence of water is crucial to the emergence of all forms of life. It is the primary medium for several biological activities, including cellular structure maintenance that are essential for the development of any known living organism. There are a number of additional elements that play a role in Triton's potential to develop life. For example, in addition to geysers that erupt subsurface nitrogen, Voyager spotted another peculiar black cryovolcanic plume throughout its journey. The carbon-rich elements presumably cause the plume's peculiar black color at a height of 5 miles. Every living thing from the tiniest bacteria to complex humans is made primarily of carbon. Although it is currently impossible to identify the precise composition of the putative ocean, astronomers from the American Astronomical Society have hypothesized that Triton's ocean may include a lot of ammonium, sodium chloride, and oxygen due to its dependence on the volatile nature of comets. Complex life as we know it is probably not possible on Triton due to the planet's extreme cold. And even with the help of nitrogen clouds in the top layers, the satellite's very thin nitrogen atmosphere will not be able to hold enough heat. The surface of Triton can still get hot, but only to moderate temperatures. Using the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope, researchers learned in 2010 that Triton, like Earth, experiences seasonal changes. However, their lifespan is far longer than three months, at 40 years per unit. On the satellite, summer has officially begun. Massachusetts Institute of Technology researchers discovered a rise in temperature during this time from negative 392 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 389 degrees Fahrenheit. For such a frigid satellite, this is actually quite a significant rise. That's why MIT professor James Elliott is sure that these are evidence of global warming. The temperature may increase by 3 degrees Fahrenheit every 9 years. This suggests that the evaporated gas may have entered the atmosphere at this time, hence increasing atmospheric pressure. On Triton, however, the atmosphere just cannot be so heavily loaded all the time. In the harsher fall and winter months, it will begin to thin until it freezes and settles on the surface. That is to say the satellite's atmosphere simply disappears throughout the colder months of the year and reappears once temperatures rise again in the spring. But this doesn't mean that simple basic life couldn't grow in the water of the satellite. However, a picture of Voyager and James Webb is not sufficient evidence for determining whether or not Triton can answer the question, are we alone? Without a doubt, Triton is one of the most intriguing satellites in the solar system, and it continues to beg many questions. And despite the challenges of traveling such a great distance by air, scientific curiosity ultimately triumphs. There was talk of a potential 16-year NASA Trident mission to Triton that would unlock the planet's secrets and those of Neptune. The mission's primary objective was to verify the presence of an ocean beneath the surface and basic chemical components in order to establish the satellite's habitability. In addition, Trident would investigate the remaining 60% of the satellite's surface, giving researchers a complete understanding of Trident's geography. Unfortunately, Trident lost out on the 2021 launch grant to the Venus exploring missions Da Vinci Plus and Veritas. Even so, the mysterious Trident is not completely without hope. Nuclear-powered space travel to Neptune is also being considered by China. In particular, NASA may rethink using Trident for a next trip. The geology of ocean planets may be further elucidated by Trident. 
to better comprehend the potential for life on the icy moon expeditions to Neptune's largest moon, could not only confirm or disprove the existence of an ocean there, but also determine its rough composition. Triton, Mimas, Enceladus, and Europa are all possible ocean planets that could alter our understanding of the origins of life and the nature of things with extreme environments. As a result, further missions will significantly expand our understanding, answering many of our outstanding questions and revealing intriguing new mysteries. Whether or not we are alone in the universe, the formation of vast seas on frozen planets and satellites, and the causes of their geological activity may one day be resolved. It's all due to the mysterious cold of Triton. As we wrap up our journey today, a big thank you for joining us at Spaceverse. Your support fuels our cosmic exploration. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep exploring with us. Until our next cosmic encounter, see you.